Hi everybody, this is Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby and we're here today to talk about multi-engine setup on electric RC aircraft. Now this video, video workshop clinic builds on another workshop video clinic we put out which is basic RC wiring. So you're going to want to check that out before you move into multi-engine setup. So let's go ahead and get started. We have two brushless motors, we have two electronic speed controls, two flight packs, and a single receiver. Now this completes an entire power plant, much like our basic power plant wiring. Uh, video. Uh, this is everything you need to get up and off the ground. The only thing missing would be the servos that would actuate the control surfaces to be able to complete your radio system. So with this configuration we're going to start off by connecting both of our electronic speed controls to our motors. Now these, the manufacturer for the motor happens to be the same one as the manufacturer for the ESC, so in this case our colors match up. So we're going to start off by matching all the colors so we know a good starting point in case we have to get uh, one motor turning in the opposite direction for counter-rotating props. A lot easier to start off with all the colors matching first in case we have to connect and re uh, disconnect and reconnect. So let's start off and connect our motor. Okay, we have both of the motors connected to each of the ESCs. Um, now, before we, our next connection is to take it to the radio system. Now, both of these ESCs have battery limiter circuits built in, meaning they supply power back to the radio receiver uh, for function, uh, for control and operation of all the other servos and all the radio functions on board the aircraft. So with both of these putting out BEC power, we really don't need that, that uh, dual connection. Now some people like it uh, for redundancy, and if you're a manufacturer, read on the, the specification sheet for your specific ESC, see if it can handle uh, parallel BEC connections. It does give you some level of redundancy uh, if you do have a problem with the BEC circuitry in one of the ESCs, uh, you'd be able to, to still get radio power off of the other one, but quite frankly I've never had that happen before, and I think it's probably a rare occurrence if something fails or circuitry fails in one of the ESCs, it's probably, you're probably going to lose uh, more than just the radio function. You'll lose probably the motor as well. But uh, uh, these ESCs will handle a parallel configuration, so I could literally take both of these connections, use a Y harness of the same gauge. Make sure you don't use an ultralight connection since you're supplying BEC power. Use a regular standard gauge Y adapter. And I can use that back to my radio uh, uh, throttle input, so our throttle connection. But in this case, I know I have um, uh, BEC power on both of these. I really don't want to run both of those back to the, uh, to the uh, radio receiver. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate one of the positive leads off of this uh, radio system. So to do that, and this is probably the most common configuration, is drop one of the BEC positives. So you only have one BEC being supplied in a standard multi-engine setup. Uh, there's a small tab on the Z, on a Z connector. And depending on the connector that you have, uh, they're all very similar, but uh, the tab size may be larger or smaller. You're going to want to lift one of these tabs to remove that positive lead. They aren't always easy to get a hold of, so you may want to use a small pair of needle nose pliers. Um, on this one, I'm going to go ahead and lift the tab just slightly and pull out on that positive lead and get some clearance out of the connector. And there it comes. I'm just go ahead and keep pulling that out. And now all I have is the negative and the data connection on this Z connector. And that's all an ESC needs. An ESC does not require the positive lead if power is already being supplied to the, to the um, a radio receiver. It doesn't require a positive lead because there's nothing to actuate and it gets its power from the flight battery that's connected to it. So now that we have our center conductor pulled out, you want to go ahead and pull that back out of the way. Now you can cut these. Uh, it's just your choice. Sometimes I like to, to uh, use ESCs in different models depending on uh, what I'm flying at the time. I may change the configuration, so I like to preserve that connector. You can also get a crimp set and connect these yourself and go to your hobby dealer. They typically have the crimp sets for these uh, small uh, radio connections. Uh, but I just like to pull it back and uh, put a little bit of shrink tubing on that raw conductor or that raw lead and then uh, use some electrical tape to hold it back out of the way. And then I know that it, which one uh, doesn't have the positive lead connected to it very clearly. So I'm just going to use a small piece of electrical tape now for our testing. I'll just roll it over. Nothing attractive, but it'll function for our test. And um, it'll keep that positive out of the rest of the radio system. So with the positive held back out of the way, now we have our negative and data on this connection. And this is our other ESC connection. We have all three. So BEC power will be supplied by this radio, uh, this ESC, to the entire radio system. Now if you're connecting individual flight batteries, you're going to want to mark that radio. Uh, lead or that, that ESC lead. So the one with BEC power, you're going to want to put a tag on there because that's the battery you're going to connect first. So let's go ahead and go back to both of our ESC connections, one with the, with the positive removed, the other one still supplying BEC power. We'll connect that through our Y adapter. 
So now we have one connection there, another connection there, and now we have a single connection then coming off our Y adapter that you treat like a single ESC connection uh, or single engine setup. You just take that straight to the uh, motor connection, the motor channel on your radio receiver, and now we have a connected power plant. All we're looking for is power from our main flight batteries, but our ESCs are both connected to our receiver. You can use a Y adapter to the same channel. Remove that BEC power off of one of them, so we're only supplying BEC power from this one. That leads here, so that's when we're going to connect to our radio system first. Now, I have uh, the transmitter here. I'll power that on. Verify that I have the right model, which I do. It's our test bench. And uh, we're going to take one of the flight batteries and connect that. We have power to our receiver. And you see the power is being supplied to the left motor, and that's the one now, that's already gone through its arming process. So that motor is fully armed. You can see it functions now. The other one is lacking uh, supply power since we didn't connect it. But we did connect the first one that powers the radio system. So everything's under control now. We can go ahead and connect our second motor. And you'll hear it go through its arming process. There. Now both motors should be armed. And we can verify the rotation. And it looks like both of them are turning counterclockwise. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the connection to my um, non-BEC uh, uh, radio or ESC first, which is this one, and then the other. Again, it's a good idea to mark these, so you always know which one to disconnect and connect first. You don't want to have a live EEC connected to ESC connected to a flight battery without any radio control at all in case of some sort of uh, a miscommunication on the ESC's part. So we want, they're both turning counterclockwise. Uh, you can turn, you can change any two wires, but I like to stick with the outside too because it's easier to remember then if I take a, my configuration apart and put it back together. I know which wires were which and it's easy to glance and say, okay, red went to red, black went to black. I'm going to go ahead and reverse that now so it'll be easier to remember that red goes to black and black goes to red. So get that disconnected and connected back in. And now that should take this left motor and put it in a clockwise orientation, which is common uh, to have them turning in this direction for a counter-rotating prop set up on a multi-engine. So, and then in this case, we're going to go ahead and move over to our Y adapter, our power Y adapter, in case you're only using a single flight pack. We already saw the connection for individual flight packs, but a lot of us still use single packs, a larger milliampere single pack. So, and in this case then, the single flight pack will power both ESCs simultaneously, and you'll hear them both armed simultaneously or close to each other. So now we have a Y harness going, power, providing power to both of our ESCs, and we're going to go ahead and connect our flight battery with our transmitter still on. All right, both of them twitched, both of them armed. And we have two functioning motors turning against each other. So that's essentially a basic multi-engine setup on an electric RC aircraft using two, STS, two ESCs, and we, used a, we showed how to do it with a single flight pack, which we have connected here with a parallel Y harness, and we can do it with dual flight packs. Uh, remove that BEC connection from one of your ESCs, uh, verify that if you do use a Y harness with both powering the, the uh, radio receiver, that your ESCs can handle that. Some manufacturers uh, require that you remove one of the BEC leads off of their uh, electronic speed controls. Now, if you have any questions that remain unanswered, you can go to our website and check under other video tutorials, or you can click on the icon that says Ask To in the lower left corner of the screen and send us a message. We'll get back to you right away and try to answer all your questions. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for joining us, and good luck with your project.